This week we are studying the x-bar theory of syntax, and we have been using it to draw syntactic trees. And one thing you might be wondering is, why in the world are we using something so complicated? Why do we have all these nodes and all these connections? Couldn't we draw simpler trees? Yes, we could draw simpler trees, and there are, as a matter of fact, many syntactic theories that we could choose from. However, x-bar theory has some very desirable properties. The trees have desirable properties that we will use to explain patterns that we see on the languages of the world. Here I'm going to focus on three properties of x-bar trees, recursivity, binarity, and something called parameters, which is that if you have a phrase with a head and a complement, for example, there's really only two ways that you can order it, head complement, complement head. Believe it or not, this very simple change is going to explain a lot of differences between languages as similar as English and Japanese, for example. Let's start with recursivity. You might have noticed that we have a verb phrase inside of an inflected phrase, and we have an adjective phrase inside a noun phrase, and so forth. In general, we can have x piece inside of x piece so that we could keep building uh, one structure inside of the other. This theory, I'm sorry, this property is called recursivity. And in theory, we could keep putting one of these inside of the other infinitely so that we could come up with an infinite number of sentences. Take a look at an example like, I think that she said that you want to go. And you could keep on going. I think that she said that you want, I think that she said that you think that she might go. Uh, you can always add one more and one more level. By the way, in theory, the, the mental limit to this kind of uh, linking is seven levels deep. But even with those restrictions, you would have an immense number of sentences that you could generate. This is why you can always come up with a new sentence of English, because these rules allow you to generate new sentences. In, in theory, an infinite number of English sentences. That's why we call this a generative grammar, because we use these rules to generate the sentences of English. Recursivity might be the most important property of human language. And it is, in fact, the main difference between human languages and the form of communications of non-human animals. Um, other animals have very complex forms of communication, but none of their communication systems appears to have recursivity, where you can build elements inside of the same type of elements. Therefore, no matter how large their systems are, they're finite, and they don't have the infinite like, creative and generative power that our languages have. So recursivity is very easily explained by the structure of the rules that we have. And it is an important property of what makes uh, our languages human languages. A property of export trees is binarity. You might have noticed that each of our nodes can project one branch, as in this NP that projects one, one, Anna, or it can project two branches. There's this V bar that projects two branches, the head of the verb and the noun phrase. X bar trees are binary at most. Each of the nodes can project two branches at most. And this is a very mathematically desirable condition. It makes them more complex. Sure, you need more nodes, but it makes them faster to search and to parse. So when you hear a sentence, your brain has to try to build an X bar structure or any syntactic structure for the words that you're hearing. And generating it in binary trees makes the operation faster. There's a third and very interesting property of these trees is that they can be used to describe any human language. This is a sentence from Japanese, for example. Anna-san ga pizza o tabemasu. Anna eats pizza. As you can see, we have the subject, Anna-san ga, in the, the, spe the specifier position of the IP. We have here the, that the inflected verb is present and formal because Japanese conjugates verbs for formal uh, forms. And here we have the verb phrase with the head of the verb to eat, tabemas, and the direct object, pizza o, the pizza. Notice that in the sentence, anasanga pizza o tabemas, 
The pizza comes before the verb. You have subject, object, verb. S-O-V for short. Pizza o tabemas. Direct object, verb. Or more generally, complement, head. So in Japanese, the, the rule for this bar level would be that the V bar generates the uh, determiner phrase and the verb. Pizza, pizza, eat. Whereas in English, you would have the, the head first. Eat, pizza. Think about this like as a, as a light switch. You can have uh, your brain determine that the heads go first, in which case your language would have verbs and objects or prepositions and nouns. If you had the head, if you had the switch on the other direction with the head last, you would have object verb and noun prepositions, which are called postpositions in such languages. So you can see that with a little switch of one position versus the other, head first or head last, this would have a lot of ramifications. It would tell you that the verbs and the objects have a certain configuration and that prepositions and nouns have certain configurations. And this is the difference between English and Japanese. So regarding complements, English is head first. You have the structure verb object, as in Anna eats pizza. In Japanese, uh, the heads come last. So you have object and then the head of the verbal phrase, the verb. Anna-san ga pizza o tabemasu. Anna pizza eats. So head first, head last explains some of the differences between English and Japanese. Again, it has ramifications throughout the entire system. If you have head first or head last for complements, this, was all, this would also affect other phrases that project complements, like prepositional phrases. So you would have the preposition in English, if you have a head first language like English, you would have the preposition first and then the noun. Eats with friends. With is the head and it goes first. Front is the complement and it's go, it goes second. In Japanese, you would have them flipped with the head coming in last. So you'd have a structure like tomodachi to, friends with, with the preposition here, a post position placed last. So you can see that one way to explain uh, uh, part of the difference between English and Japanese is that when it comes to complements, English is head first and Japanese is head last. And this tiny switch in one direction or the other determines where a lot of these structures are going to go, like in which order they're going to appear. So you can see that small changes in an export tree can have a lot of ramifications in what a language looks like and how it's ordered. In summary, we use expert theory because it offers compelling explanations to several important phenomena. For example, why can humans make infinite sentences? Why can you always keep, up com keep coming up with new sentences of English? Because your syntax, rule syntax rules are recursive, because you have ways to build sentences into sentences. Why are languages different? Why do they have different word orders? Because there's a number of parameters, like the position of the head versus the complement, and you can adjust it in one way or the other, head first or head last. These trees are also binary, and this allows us to uh, posit that they are processed faster mathematically, for example. I can tell you from computer science that having binary trees does make them be processed faster. In the next video, we're going to talk about a new kind of phrase, complement phrase.